hit me. From Studio P in Sausalito, the home of the hit, it's time for... Suckatash. Yes, Suckatash, the comedy soundcast soundcast featuring snippets from comedy... Soundcasts. And also interviews with comedians, comedian soundcasters, and other showbiz folk. And now, here's your host, internationally recognized comedy soundcast soundcaster, Mark Hershaw. Mark Hershaw. How do, listener? Your happy-go-lucky every other weekly host, Tyson Saner, is enjoying a well-earned week off to do some family traveling. So, it's me, Mark Hershaw, back again this week. This time for Epi 281 of Succotash, the comedy soundcast soundcast. Hoping that you had a grateful Thanksgiving if you're in the United States. For anywhere else in the world, did you have a nice Thursday? For last week's episode 280, I had a convivial sit down with Dana Gould. A great conversation with the shittiest sound quality I have ever had the misfortune to foist upon your succotash listening ears. Since probably Epi 109 in my chat with special guest back then, Greg Proops. But I believe decibel for decibel, this one with Dana was even worse. So apologies again. I, and I can't believe for the first time in over 10 years, my mom actually listened to the to, to the soundcast. First time she's ever caught succotash in 10 years. And all she had to say was, it didn't sound very good. <laughs> it didn't sound very good. No, no, it didn't. Oh. But we will have Dana back again, I promise, and it'll be under quieter circumstances if I can do anything at all about that. If you still want to cringe your way through it, though, it is available through all the usual distribution points you can find, Succotash, like Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Audible, Amazon Music, SoundCloud, or even our home site at SuccotashShow.com. This week... In an episode I'm calling Serving Up Fresh Leftovers, I have a quartet of clips from four shows that I don't believe we have ever featured during the 10 plus years of this show. They are B3F, Carefully Reckless, Everything is Alive, and The Amelia Project. In addition, this installment of Succotash is sponsored by, no surprise here, Henderson's Pants and their new parka pants. At last, your legs will be in heat. Kicking us off this week is the B3F Soundcast, which booms out of Knoxville, Tennessee, and is hosted by Joey Manning and Stephen. Now, I'm not sure what Stephen's last name is. I scoured their home site. I looked at Twitter. I looked at all the socials, and I do know that his Twitter handle is at Stephen underscore is underscore angry, which may explain a lot. The show's title, B3F, is a way for them to get uh, the real title, Best Friends for Fucking Ever, past the Soundcast title sensors at Apple and other places. And the way I found their show is that they were nice enough to throw at Succotash Show into a tweet. Thus, I included them in last week's Tweet Sack segment. Yeah, remember that, Tweety? These guys have known each other for over 20 years, which means they love and respect one another while still managing to shit on each other every day. In this clip, taken from their episode 117, called The Drowning Rats episode, they talk about getting away with murder or not. You know, if I'm asked not to, it is me. Oh, okay. That fucking cunt. Yeah. I will never add you on Instagram. How's ever, your mom? Fucking ever fucking ever will you get added or will I accept your follow yeah. request just going to throw that out there now tell your mom Stephen says sorry yeah <laughs> um so we were talking about I said you know if anything ever happened or whatever especially if I were asked to stay out of out of it or if uh, by the person involved or if I needed to stay out of it because then uh that that uh I'm, I would obviously be a prime suspect or something I said I gotta do is say the word I yeah. got I, I know you know I I, I have people that would do something cost nothing sitting across the table from you and right, <laughs> and she said what hold on like what and i was like like whatever and i was like yeah. and you'll never have to know yeah 100%. or anything like that you would you would never be you know you would have an alibi to anything or whatever you know yeah <clears throat> and, she, and we got to talking and i was like i was like there are people that i know i can trust no matter what yeah and i said 
doesn't matter what. I never question whether I can trust Stephen for anything or not. I said, there are other people that I feel like I can trust. But on a daily basis, in every conversation I have with that person, I'm vetting them. Yeah. Because if they say something that makes me go, ooh, I don't know if I could trust you if yeah. I needed if – if the shit went down, yeah. I don't know if I could trust you anymore because yeah. of that or whatever. And she was like, that's insane to me. She's like, well, what would you – like?" I was like, if I want to do it, I don't want to just go – I'm not one that wants to just go put two behind the ear real quick. Yeah. I said, no, no, no. I want plastic room Dexter style. Oh, yeah. I want to look you in the eye and talk to you about this first (laughs) and then watch you as you suffer, as you suffer as the life. And she said that, and like, she was just like, I don't understand this. This is, um, this is scary. A little No, I'm I'm not going to lie. And Amanda knows this. One of, one of my dreams one of the things I hope I get to do in my life something to happen to one of your kids so you can do this. <laughs> no, not to happen to my kids. Just kidding. No, but have an opportunity and a justifiable reason to take another life with my bare hands. Not with a gun, oh. not with a knife. I want to physically fucking <laughs> and I mean with good reason. Like, you know, like I said, find a child molester. Yeah. You know, and fucking like beat them to death with my fists. That would make me so happy. No, I get that. Yeah. Yeah, so, I, yeah. But my big thing, honestly, that's kept me from fucking a lot of people up is the the inconvenience of going to jail and derailing sure. shit I have going on. Having to come up with an alibi. Yeah, fuck that. It's not even an alibi. To dispose it's, of weapons <laughs> or whatever. That, all that's part of the fun, man. It's man. The, the whole thing is because that I know good and I well. I don't like waste. You're wasting a weapon <laughs> if you throw it away. But I I know good and well. I'm not smart enough to not get caught, especially with modern so. technology. Not with modern technology. It's very, very difficult to it get would away be. with. Like, with, it would be. With murderer. Not like shit like gangland style shit, but I'm talking about like an actual like proper murder. Like well, that's the thing. You can't kill somebody that you have any connection to. Yeah. Because you, anyone that they're connected to is a, at least a little bit of a suspect. But even then, like the methods for investigating like a murder, like and again, not like random like gang violence or some shit like that, but I'm talking about like... Like a normal, like human person murder, like, crime of passion, person, like or crime of passion. Like that. It's very hard to get away with it nowadays. Like, yeah, very hard. I think so, but it happens all the time. One of the things that's happened. What y'all sipping on? Ranch like water, ranch man. water, bitch. Shout out to Tequila wine. and some Topo Chico. Yeah, and I don't have and a problem. Lime. Their randomization. I yeah. just it's out of principle at this point. Out of principle, no other reason <clears throat> but the fact yeah. that I just don't want to. Latch on to B3F anywhere you get your soundcast from or hop on over to our home site at SuccotashShow.com and click on their show title on our blog post for this episode to find them. We also feature links to the host's socials whenever we can find them, so you'll find them up there this week as well. Next up is a clip from the Carefully Reckless Soundcast hosted by comedian and actress Jessica Moore, also known as Jess Hilarious. Known for bringing her, quote, no-holds-barred, unquote, topics to life on her show, our clip gets her a little closer to home because her guest is her son, Ash. As, as you'll hear when this little man trades barbs with his mom, the apple does not fall far from the attitude tree. All right, we're going to start with school because one day last week you told me that you liked a particular girl, you know what I mean? And you was like, I'm going to go to school and I'm going to tell her I like her Monday. Did you end up telling her? Yes. You told her? Yes. All right. What'd she say? She said she don't know. She said she don't know? What she don't know? I don't know. She said she don't know if she like me. She said she don't know if she like you. What you do? Nothing. Nah, bro. A girl just ain't going to tell you she don't know. You know what I mean? Like, you got all the swag. You cool. You popular. You smart. Why I mean, I'm she... not that smart. But... What? Are you crazy? You are smart as a whip. You are a genius. Let's go. Th- tell them about these grades. What are you talking about? Uh, in math, it was a hundred. In gym, it was a one hundred. In science, it was a ninety three. Mm-hmm. And in reading, it was a ninety seven. Mm-hmm. And in art, it was a ninety five. Listen, don't you ever say that you ain't that smart, bro. You are smart. You're ahead of your class. And I ain't even talking about how big your head is. I'm talking about like you are ahead of your class for sure. You know that? You might Don't even let me get started on your head though. 
First of all, Shorty, we ain't even really be doing a roasting because you already know I can go 20 rounds nah, with you. Nah, nah, nah. You already I can go 100 rounds on you, bro. Bro, we can, we can go 20 rounds. I'll win 20 rounds. We can go a million rounds. I'll win a million rounds. Shorty, you're never beating me in roasting. That's just I what always it. have beaten you. You have never beaten my me dog, in roasting. My dog can beat you. In roasting? Yeah. Now you're just talking out the side of your little head now. Like, you just definitely just saying anything. Let's get back to this girl. So, yeah, don't and don't make me say her name. You said don't say her name. I ain't going to say it. But you keep on trying to roast me on the low. I'm going to tell everybody that you like. Stop. Hey. No, be quiet. All right, all right. I ain't going to. All right, all right. <laughs> so, what, so what, what did you do for her to tell you that you don't know? That she don't know? I wasn't know? doing nothing. She just said she don't know. Yeah, she just said she don't know. Yeah. Now, did you do something for her? Did, did one of your friends do something to her? Like, oh, for, for her? To, this you know? was before, like, the, at the start of, um, at the start of, um, fourth grade, um, my homeboy, one of my homeboys, she, they just went up to her and said she a bum. <laughs> what? Damn. He just was like, yo, you're a bum, yo. Yes. And what you do? Why he was talking to your girl well, like that? I was that? talking to my friends just before I liked her. Oh, so you didn't like her when your homeboy called her a bum? No, this was before I liked her. Oh, it's before you liked her. Right, okay. So so do, do you feel like she's a bum? No. No, did you feel like she was a bum then? No. So why you say that? Like, why are you... I don't want to talk about that no more. All right, all right, all right. What you want to talk about? When you going to put me on? When you going to give me my own show? I, first of all, what what the hell I look like? 50 Cent or Tyler Perry? I can't give you a damn show. We can get you a show together when you start being serious about TV. What type of show do I you I am serious. Yo, you change your occupation every damn day. You want to play basketball? Do you want to sell cars? Do you want to be a cop? Do you want to be a rapper? Like, well, you always change up. I don't know what you want to do. And one thing I'm not going to do, I'm not going to put all your eggs in one basket and put you on TV and then one day you wake up and be like, I don't want to do this, man. Like, cause you know how you are. You're very indecisive, and you're only nine, so you don't know what you want to do. I'm yet. ten. Shorty, we're not gonna lie to the people that already know how old you are. We we just can't. Like, come on. So, what would you have a show about? What do you want? What, football. You would have a football show. Mm-hmm. And I I never seen a football show. What what is that? It's gonna be about me going to football camp. So it's like a reality show, like with you going, oh, okay. Well, so you, what's your favorite football team? No, what's your favorite football uh, team? Ravens. Sure. Oh, the Ravens. That's a taste of Carefully Reckless with Jessica Moore, or Jess Hilarious, if you like, which looks like it's coming up on its one-year anniversary as part of the Podcast Republic Network. I will be back with more clippage right after this word from our fake sponsor, Henderson's Pants. Hello, friend. Bill Haywatt here with some excellent news for those of you caught in wintry climbs this season. Henderson's Pants is proud to introduce their new Parker Pants. For years, people have been protecting their upper bodies with warm, puffy goodness, while their lower extremities had to make do with soggy jeans and steamy, sodden, thermal underwear. Uh, no more. Now, when it's time to go out into the frozen tundra that used to be your front yard, just toss on a pair of Henderson's parka pants with nothing more than briefs, boxers, or panties underneath. You're ready to shovel that driveway or make snow angels, keeping toasty warm all the while. Even if it's warm where you live, but you work in a freezing cold office, Parker Pants are perfect. That's because unlike your typical ski jacket, Parker Pants feature stylish outer material, ranging from combed cotton and linen to silk and polyester blends, so you can mix and match to go with your sport coats, suit jackets, or blouse. Originally designed for Admiral Perry, Sir Edmund Hillary, and Tenzig Norgay, Henderson's Parka Pants are just what you need when you're looking to put some heat in your seat. That's Henderson's, makers of fine pants since 1909, and now back to Sakatash. The Amelia Project is a curious little soundcast. It's a scripted show with a very international cast and crew contributing from places like London, Vienna, Oslo, and Los Angeles. 
The premise is that the Amelia Project is a super secret organization set up to help people fake their own deaths and start over with a brand new identity and a life far from where they were when they chose to end things. The clip we're featuring is from their recent episode number 45 entitled Raven, and this is the beginning of the interview with the subject who'd like to start a new life and why. Hi, I'm Raven. Raven Harbinger. Thanks for seeing me. Oh, uh, not at all. Please, sit. Welcome to the Amelia Project. <sighs> this is weird. I haven't really spoken to anyone for a very long time. Oh? Why not? I live by myself. Oh, not too keen on company. Oh, no, I'd love to be around people. I just can't. Oh, I'm not allowed. People don't want me around. Why, why, why not? I bring death. Sorry? Wherever I go, someone dies. You're a murderer? No, no, I'm just a, a bad omen. You're saying what? You predict death? Not predict exactly, more proceed. You proceed death? Yes. It started when I was six. My parents sent me on holiday to my aunt and uncle's farm. My parents were busy moving house and wanted me out of the way. Auntie and uncle didn't like me much, said I creeped them out. But they took me anyway, family, you know. Then two weeks after I arrive at their farm, my uncle stumbles into a cow pat and drowns. Ugh. A cow pat? Yes. I didn't trip him, if that's what you're thinking. I was in a hammock in the orchard when it happened. Sleeping? Reading Edgar Allan Poe, I think. <laughs> After that summer, I started a new school. I remember the first day, how excited I was to meet my teacher, Mrs Doubleday. She had smoker's breath and bad personal hygiene, but she was a good teacher. She didn't even make it past Halloween before she mistook a lighter for a vape and caused herself to spontaneously combust. Shear my beard and call me a sheep. All through my life, incidents like these have kept on happening. I attend my great-grandmother's 90th. A month later, she's hit by a ball at tennis practice and drops dead. I sign up for drama group. Juliet falls off the balcony and breaks Romeo's neck. I go on safari in Kenya. The day after I leave, our guide is trampled by a horny rhino. Over and over again, I arrive somewhere and soon after, someone dies. As the years went by, word spread. Whenever I signed up for a club or an organisation, invitations to meetings would just stop coming. I couldn't get a job, so I ended up freelancing, working from home as an illustrator... Never meeting anyone in real life, just online. My friends stopped seeing me, one by one. But what hurt the most, I think, was how my family abandoned me. I stopped being invited to birthdays or weddings. Not even funerals. I was cousin death. Everyone was afraid of me. People might claim they're not superstitious. But I know what it means when people say, Oh, maybe not this weekend. Perhaps another time. So, you want to start over with a clean slate? Yes. Why don't you just move somewhere no one knows you? I can't escape my reputation, what with the internet and social media. Raven Harbinger will always be seen as a messenger of death. Yes, I guess you could do with a new name. I need a new identity. I need to be someone people aren't scared of. You know, I'm really nice once you get to know me. People just never come close enough to realise. You're completely isolated. I hardly see anyone. I order everything online so I don't have to go out. I've tried very hard to be happy in my own company. I'm just... not. I miss hugs. Conversations. Heck, even arguments. I don't want to be this lonely. So I thought, never more. And I came here. I just want to be around people again. That episode of The Amelia Project features cast members Carly Fish, Alan Bergon, Julia Morizawa, Julia Seahorn, and Tarquin as Sheba the Cat, although our clip did not have Sheba in it. They are available almost everywhere sound casts are found, with the notable exception of SoundCloud, for some reason. Our last clip for this episode comes from a soundcast with another very interesting premise, Everything is Alive. It's an unscripted interview show where the host and creator, Ian Chaleg, chats up pretty much anything but people to find out about their lives. 
I grabbed a snippet from his interview with Michael, the phone booth portrayed here by Michael Kostroff. So tell me about um, tell me about your street, sort of where you are in the world. Well, I'm I'm uh, I'm in New York City. I'm on the Upper West Side. It's a great neighborhood. Uh-huh. A lot of dogs, uh, which I love watching, and uh, there are some great smells from the restaurants uh, uh-huh. up here. They're re- really really good smells. Um, I don't know, of course, what it's like to 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 eat. But uh, I just enjoy the, the aromas. It's it's uh, it's a wealth, and and, the, and f- the people watching. It's the best. I mean, I've always been here, so I can't really compare it to other neighborhoods. But uh, I think I, I think I have the best corner. <laughs> I just do. Yeah. I was I was looking. I was doing a little research, and you know there are a few thousand uh, payphones in New York. But um, wow. are there that many? Yeah. Hmm. But that's kind of uh, cool. Phone booths like yourself, only four remain yeah. in Manhattan. You're one of four. Yeah, I kind of sense that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know, I have a pretty good view from my corner. I, you know, I've seen seen a lot of things change. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, th- there's a guy Floyd who used to be on the opposite corner, and yeah, he's he, he they took about a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, Floyd was the payphone. Yeah. The phone booth. Yeah. Can Can I ask you what it was like to watch Floyd get taken away? You know, I I just think this is – it's better than it used to be is the, is the reality because uh, it used to be that when we were taken out, that was – you know, we would get smashed and put in a pile somewhere. I mean you hear stories, you know, a garbage pile or, or dumped in the river and, you know – now we have, you know, we're reincarnated. Uh, we have come back as all kinds of things, you know, which I think is great. Mm-hmm. I, I, every time I see, like, you know, something made out of metal or plastic, I, you know, I always wonder if that's part of Floyd. You know, that's what I hope happens when I'm done. What when you think about being something else? What's something you you like? I'm <laughs> kind of embarrassed to tell you this because it's sort of sacrilegious, but I, I'd kind of like to come back as like about a hundred cell phones. You know, there's sort of a rivalry. We don't necessarily like the cell phones. It's a whole different experience. Sure, But like kind of the symphony of conversations that would go on, like the things I could hear, you know, it's no secret I'm not as active as I used to be. And and I I think that would be so cool to be uh, part of just talking again. I was thinking about about the difference between – the way you operate and the way a cell phone operates. Yeah, it's very uh, different. Because so much of when I'm using a cell phone, I'm not a, I'm not actually talking on it. I'm using it because it's, you know, a computer, basically. Right. So, and I think a lot of people are the same way. What do you think it would feel like to be stared at the way a person stares at their phone? Wow. I th- that would be really weird. You know, you know, in our heyday, mostly people <laughs> barely looked at us to put the coins in and they make the call and, you know, you're just sort of a a witness. And uh, I think that would be really weird. Can we try it, actually? See what it's like? Okay. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to, I'm not going to make a call. Okay. I'm just going to stare at you the way I would stare at a cell phone and you can describe what it feels like. Okay. We'll do that for a minute. You ready? Yeah. It, it 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 it's already weird. Like I'm very aware right now of my buttons. You should be pushing something. It feels like it's it feels like it's been already a minute. Now I'm thinking about the last call that was made on me. I'm trying to relive that and replay it in my mind. Hmm. I can't believe it hasn't been a minute yet. With several seasons of shows under his belt, Ian has talked to everything from a jack-o'-lantern and a set of bagpipes to an alligator and a chainsaw. Find Everything is Alive pretty much everywhere soundcasts can be found. 
We've had no calls the past couple of weeks to the Succotash Show and Runaway Truck Ramp Hotline at 1-818-921-7212, so screw that noise for this episode. Instead, I'll jump right into the tweet sack. Yeah, Tweety. Here's the rundown of kindly folk arenos who've been mentioning at Succotash Show in their socials recently. Misfit Scully. Jock Doc Podcast, which always retweets our stuff. Let's Chat Podcast. Nooks and Crannies. Rin. Married. Crazy Pod and Vlog. Oh, that's four words altogether. Married, crazy, married, comma, crazy, comma, pod, ambersan, vlog. Married, crazy, pod, and vlog. <laughs> Salty Language Pod. The Amazing Nerd Show. I shake my head with Lisa and Sam. That Jordan Brady, The Hobcast, Jeff the Human, JJ Whitehead, Multiverse of Badness podcast. I finally watched Judith Rose Schwartz and Michael O'Brien. That's the button on this episode of Succotash. I'm happy to have been occupying the hosting chair for the past two weeks of the show. But happy, even more, to welcome back my illustrious co host Tyson Saner for episode 282 next week. I secretly think one of the reasons he wanted to take a week off was so he could go back to hosting the even-numbered shows. I shall return oddly after that with Epi 283. Until then, keep us with you as you get your Christmas shopping done, batten down the hatches against the Omicron COVID variant, mask up, vax up, and try to keep a civil tongue in your head when dealing with other folks during this sometimes stressful time of the year. And if anyone asks if you heard anything good lately, won't you please pass the succotash? You've been listening to Succotash, the comedy soundcast soundcast with your host, Mark Hershaw. Brought to you by Henderson's Pants and... Imagine your company's name right here. Rate us and review us at Apple and Google Podcasts. Find us on the web at SuccotashShow.com. On Spotify. On Stitcher. On iHeartRadio. On YouTube. On SoundCloud. And wherever fine soundcasts are streamed and or downloaded. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Succotash Show. Like us on Facebook. Email us at marc at succotashshow.com or call into the Succotash Skype line at our toll call number 818-921-7212. The number again is 818-921-7212. You can also upload clips from your favorite comedy soundcasts directly to us using our direct upload link at hightail.com slash you slash Succotash. Succotash is produced and engineered by Joe Paulino through the auspices of Studio P. Sausalito, the home of the hit. Our hosts are Mark Hershon and Tyson Saner. Our musical director is Scott Carvey. Our booth assistant is Kenny Durges. Succotash is executive produced by Mark Hershon. Until next time, I'm your loyal booth announcer, Bill Haywatt, reminding you to please pass the Succotash goodbye. This has been a Succotash Patch production.